Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Giving Tuesday with the Farms Policy Coalition. We're here talking about uh, giving, talking about opportunities for you to support organizations like, in this case, the California Gun Rights Foundation. Uh, by making a donation, which will actually be matched by Facebook. So one of the cases that we want to talk to you about, uh, well, it's a Miller case, and it has to do with the California assault weapons ban. Uh, and to talk about that, we have uh, the lead attorney in the case, Mr. George Lee. Mr. Lee, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks, Craig. Excellent, excellent. Do me a favor, just kind of let folks know about this particular case and why it's important that they support the California Gun Rights Foundation, and well, as the California Gun Rights Foundation supports their rights. Right. Well, this is a case that we're pretty excited about. It's called uh, Miller versus uh, Attorney General Becerra. And it's a, a pretty broad, it's turning into a pretty broad sweeping um, challenge to California's assault weapons ban to the extent that it's based upon these features. Now, there's a lot of history with California and all their attempts to ban what they call assault weapons, of course. and you know, we don't have time to go into all of that, but the long and short of it is that California's uh, current definition of assault weapon primarily now includes uh, trying to ban firearms based on features, you know, such as uh, flash hiders, collapsible stocks, pistol grips, and that kind of thing. This standard stock stuff that you'd find on any uh, AR type rifle or or, you know, many other firearms. And so our challenge uh, in this case, Miller uh, versus Becerra, is uh, to challenge the definition of assault weapon based on those features um, and and all the other laws that are derived from that definition, such as the prohibition on possession, transfer, et cetera, of firearms. Um, I think we think that all those should fall by the wayside because the definition California's definition of assault weapons based on these features is simply irrational. It can't be supported by history or tradition. That's what the case is about in a nutshell. Well, and, and in essence, most of these features that they're talking about are, are, are cosmetic features. They do not make the firearm more deadly or more dangerous. Well, they are cosmetic to be sure, because functionally speaking, if, you know, if you're facing a, an armed criminal, it doesn't matter really whether they have a flash hider. Um, it doesn't matter whether they're using a, uh, an AR-15, of course, that has a, you know, using, using a, a 223 round as, as opposed to a mini 14, right? That doesn't have any of these features. Um, it has the same round. So from that perspective, yes, they're cosmetic. But at the same time, I think most shooters understand that certain things like a pistol grip, for example, do um, support the ability for you to use a firearm effectively and accurately. And, you know, as a law abiding responsible gun owner, right, you're the one that's going to be using, maybe charged with using this, this uh, item in self defense. Well, you know, if you're the law abiding responsible citizen, you're going to be accountable for every shot. And so you need to be able to control that. You need to be able to adjust the uh, firearm uh, to, a, to your specific length, right? Length of pull. Uh, you need to be able to manipulate the firearm safely and effectively. Um, these are not things that criminals, of course, care about, but these are things that responsible citizens care about. So yeah, they are cosmetic uh, in that sense, because they don't really uh, have that real effective functional difference um, to a criminal. But of course, to an armed responsible citizen, you know, you want to have not only those advantages, but you want to be able to be able to fire accurately and ultimately responsibly. Well, it, exactly. Um, you know, the, the sad part in particular when it comes to a lot of this stuff is, is the people who oftentimes are writing these laws they are not, one, they're not necessarily interested in even law-abiding gun owners uh, and, and your ability to be able to effectively utilize your firearm or our firearm to be able to defend ourselves. Um, but secondly, there, there's also oftentimes a, a significant amount of or a lack of understanding of firearms technology. And so we wind up with some of these things, which, which like you said, 
some of them are some of them help with the functionality but don't necessarily make the firearm more dangerous um and that functionality is what really helps the law-abiding citizen to be able to like you said be responsible for every round that they that they hopefully will never have to fire but may one day have to well that's correct and and i think everyone knows and it's no secret that the people who are writing these uh, gun laws have no clue um you know what these features are they just know that look if if it appears on a military style weapon uh then it must be bad uh so where exactly is this is the case right now and uh what uh what are going to be the next steps well you know uh so we this is a recently filed case uh we're excited about uh, proceeding here we've amended the complaint to expand it um dramatically to include all of the the uh, features a challenge to all the features that the penal code the california penal code uh, uh prohibits um and right now we're actually teeing up and we will be filing very shortly a motion for a preliminary injunction uh to try to get the court to uh understand and weigh in on uh, whether or not we've stated a claim that has a likelihood of prevailing on the merits and that we've shown uh, uh, enough uh, uh, compelling circumstances that should uh, force the court to uh, to provide us uh, an injunction that would prevent the state from enforcing uh, its assault weapons laws um, against not just our clients or our plaintiffs, but against all the people in the state who are in a similar situation. That is, they are law-abiding uh, citizens. They're not prohibited from owning firearms they legally acquired um, uh, uh, firearms over the years that they either wish to reconvert back to assault weapons or wish to buy and acquire new off-the-shelf um, uh, firearms that are classified as assault weapons but that are available in um, I believe it's 45 other states uh, do not have assault weapons bans and this is something that we spell out in our motion so, uh, so the next steps are for us to uh, see if we can get a, the judge to weigh in on and uh, give us a preliminary injunction that would prevent them, the state, from uh, enforcing this sort of insane law. Now, one of the things I think that's important to point out is this: this uh, is actually going to be heard by Judge Benitez, who, uh, who actually, in a prior ruling relating to magazine, the magazine ban. Uh, has demonstrated uh, a, a clear understanding of the Second Amendment, and 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 uh, I think that's important because it, if it speaks to his mind and his understanding of the Second Amendment, it, it could lean toward. It means that we've at least got a shot. Well, I like to think that we 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 think we've got yeah. enough uh, evidence that we could prevail in front of any judge, uh, any federal judge in the state. Um, and so really, it doesn't really matter uh, who the judge is, you know, we're going to tee it up and, um, and present the evidence and we think we've uh, demonstrated a compelling case. Uh, it is in front of Judge Benitez, who did previously give uh, pl the plaintiffs a favorable ruling in a magazine case uh, uh, regarding California's restriction on large capacity magazines. And that is certainly favorable. In fact, the entire original premise of the case we filed is that you can't base a definition of assault weapon if it's solely derived from uh, a feature which happens to be insertion of a large capacity magazine that happens to be a fixed magazine under california's definition if so that was the original premise of the lawsuit and then it's been expanded more recently to say well not only that not only is large large capacity magazine a feature that you can't ban by calling it an assault weapon but there's all these other features as well um like like we talked about like the collapsible stock or the pistol grip and these kinds of things it just doesn't make any sense that you uh that california can prohibit so many Amer uh it, of its citizens uh, from acquiring these items when they're freely available everywhere else in the state i mean everywhere else in the country yep exactly once again, sir, thank you so much uh, for the work that you're doing uh, for Farms Policy Coalition, the Farms Policy Foundation, and in this specific, specific case, the California Gun Rights Foundation. 
Uh, folks, this is the reason why it's vitally important that we support this case. Uh, and now you have an opportunity to do so and have those resources matched by Facebook. So it's real simple. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, then all you have to do is click on the donate button that's right there on the video. If you're watching it on YouTube, well, then all you need to do is follow the link in the description of the video and then look for the donate button and make a donation. Support us, support Facebook as they support us, as we support your right to keep and bear arms. Remember, we are the Firearms Policy Coalition. We are the home in the fight for civil rights. Got to use them or we're going to lose them. You guys take care. If you like our videos, follow, subscribe, like, and share.